ended the volcano. I came back down in one piece. I am never doing that again. That was the hardest hike I've ever done. Not interested in summiting Mount Everest. No interest in climbing 4,000 meters in the air again. But I'm here today to tell you everything I packed to survive this volcano so that you can maybe survive this volcano too if you want. Why does this volcano even need surviving? This website says it can be 20 plus degrees Celsius, aka 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the day as you hike up and get down to below zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit at night. So on the way up, it was pretty okay, but at night, I was dying. And there's a lot of people who want to do this hike at night to actually go to the mouth of the volcano and then come back down and you will you'll be fighting for your life. I think I want to start off by just showing you our sleeping quarters so you can get a sense of how cold exactly it was. Depending on the tour company you use, the cabins that you sleep in will be a little different. So after I had already descended the mountain, I met some other people who told me they used these other companies and they were like, were you cold at night? And I was like, yeah, I was really cold at night. And they were like, I wasn't cold at all. And they had these cabins with double bunk beds and they were like double insulated. Um, but this was our cabin. Here's the tour. Oh my God, welcome in. Thank you for wanting to see my- So it was really cold. <laughs> and I don't know if you can tell in my voice, but I do I do think I came down with a little bit of something it the afterwards. Volcano. There were girls who were sick on our hike, so that might be part of it. Uh, but the extreme temperature definitely played a role for me and I did get crazy headaches from altitude sickness. With that being said, let's get into what I packed to survive. Like the article said, it gets pretty warm on the way up and you are pretty much walking a 45 degree incline through stone and volcanic ash for five hours. So you wanna wear sweat wicking layers. Starting with my base layer, I wore these like six or seven inch Nike bike shorts underneath and then I wore these waterproof hiking pants from REI. This is what I wore on the bottom. It is supposed to get pretty wet, potentially, during the cloud forest, which is the second leg of the hike. And these hiking pants, these waterproof hiking pants have been serving me pretty well. They keep me dry and happy, and they're also really breathable. So I found that wearing these over bike shorts was more than enough cover on the way up. And also, if you fall, your legs are covered. I can't believe I even have to talk about the possibility that you might fall. I wore this blue sweat wicking t-shirt that I got from REI. I'll insert a picture of myself looking unhappy wearing it here. Um, but this was very breathable, it was nice, and I didn't feel gross on the way up. Just wore it over a sports bra. And then for my light layer, when it did get a little chilly, um, if you sit down to like eat lunch or like take a break, basically if you stop moving for a certain amount of time, you're going to get a little chillier. You're going to feel that 68 degrees. So I wore the Lululemon Define jacket. It's again a sweat wicking thin running jacket and I just tied it around my waist when I wasn't wearing it. They recommend that you bring a raincoat and another coat. You could, of course, bundle this into the same singular winter coat that is waterproof, um, but I would advise against it, actually, because you could get rained on on the way up, and you're definitely not going to want to wear a thick winter jacket while you are sweating balls trying to climb this mountain. So in terms of layers, what I packed with me was this REI, again, MVP is REI for this video this REI rain jacket. I'll insert a picture of the specific one that I got, um, but it just has these like breathable panels on the inside. It's really lightweight um, and it did the job. It actually didn't rain while we were hiking. It didn't rain the whole night, it didn't rain on the way down. So theoretically I didn't need it, uh, but I did appreciate it as another layer 
late at night when it was cold. So that is everything I wore during the day. Let's talk about what I wore at night. Starting with the base. As soon as we got to the top and I stopped sweating, I put on these thermals. These are the cold proof, cold proof, something like that, thermal leggings. So I put these on over my bike shorts and then I put on the hiking pants over them. Next, I kept the same t-shirt on, same sports bra, and I just put this thermal long sleeve base layer I got from Target for like $10 over it. And then I put on this Marmo down hoodie. This is my winter jacket. It's supposed to be good for up to freezing temperatures according to the Marmo website, which is the whole reason I got it. And this baby was expensive, but it really, it worked over time. It really did the most. I put on the rest of my layers, like the Lululemon Define jacket, I put on the puffer, and then I put on the raincoat. So I'm really, really wearing everything that I carried on the way up this mountain. As for accessories, I got these waterproof gloves. I wore these to Iceland. Um, they did the trick. I didn't honestly end up using them that much because I found that when I was hiking with the hiking poles, my hands weren't like getting cold because I was moving so much. And at night, I found them really uncomfortable to sleep with. So I just like put my hands inside the sleeping bag and it was fine. Beanie, very, very necessary for sleeping and also looking cute in your pictures. And then I got this neck gaiter from again, REI. MVP of this video You might think to yourself. Why do I need a scarf on the way up? If you're walking behind people they're kicking up a bunch of dust Because half of this mountain is just volcanic ash and really loose soil. So there's a lot of dust on the way up and On the way down the dust is even worse because people are basically running down the mountain it took five hours for us to ascend, but then two hours to descend. So you can imagine the pace and the amount of stuff that is being kicked up in the air. My fingernails were black. Every time I blew my nose, it was just black dust. So Negator on the way down was my best friend and I would highly recommend. I've mentioned hiking poles a couple times. I had hiking poles. And you don't need to bring them with you to Guatemala. You don't need to bring like any of this stuff with you to Guatemala because the rest of the country is pretty tropical and very warm. You can rent all this from any of the hiking companies that you're gonna wanna go with for this tour. But hiking poles. You might think to yourself, I don't need those. Why do I need to spend an extra like two American USD to get these poles. I got mine from REI, once again, and I just carried them in my duffel the whole time I was in the country. But even if I had not gotten them, I would rent them. Over all of this stuff, I would rent those. Two of my friends did this mountain without them, and you, you can do it. You can go up and down. But if you can make yourself more comfortable, you should do it. This is a long hike, it's really hard, and just do your future self a favor by getting hiking poles. Kevin actually did the second leg of the tour, which was the Fuego hike. I didn't do it because once I got to base camp, I was like actually tapped out and it's um, technically extra if you want to go to Fuego. But he actually asked me for my hiking poles because he had gone up the mountain without them and he was like, if I'm gonna go up the rest of this volcano, I really need some support. So even if you don't have back problems, even if you haven't traditionally used hiking poles, I would get them for this. And almost every single person we passed also had them. The next thing you're gonna want is a headlamp. Even if you don't plan on doing that second Fuego hike after you get to base camp, you might wanna do like a sunset hike, you might wanna go to the bathroom when it's dark outside, and you will want a headlamp. Also to possibly do the sunrise hike in the morning, or if your tour group is gonna start descending the mountain pretty early in the day, you're gonna want a headlamp, which again, REI MVP. And the last thing is a backpack. What did I carry all this stuff in when I wasn't wearing it? I got the Eddie Bauer Stowable Packable 20 liter backpack, and it just looks like this. 
um, but it's packable. So when you're not using it, you can just pack it up into something that's like the size of a like sandwich bag. I ended up using this bag as my day pack for the rest of the trip. But if you don't have plans to do that, it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's very light. You will notice that it distinctly lacks like the clips that provides some support for your shoulders when you're hiking. I'm not gonna lie, it did get a little annoying. Obviously when you're hiking for five hours, anything you're carrying gets annoying. But it was pretty compact and I was able to fit all of these jackets, all of these accessories and two meals that the tour group gave us while I ascended the mountain. Plus two um, liters of water. It's a pretty sturdy, device it was pretty handy and compared to like the other hiking backpacks like, i'm sure if you look up pictures just of people hiking this mountain the other hiking backpacks they have look like backpacking backpacks like they have a part in the top where you could like roll up your jacket and connect it there they have like waist support um but honestly watching everybody else rent this gear including the backpack that backpack did not look very comfortable so if you have the option, this backpack was a really good one and I would go with it again if I was going to do this hike. That is everything I packed to survive the Argatenango hike to base camp. I didn't end up hiking to Fuego, but this is again all you need to hike to Fuego. So if you're doing this hike, best of luck to you. You're going to do great. You're going to feel so accomplished. And most importantly, with all of this stuff, you will survive your overnight trip. Thanks so much for watching.